Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on IMF projects India to be fastest growing economy in the world. Pakistan occupied Kashmir's PM sacked by court in contempt case. And economic crisis looms large over Sri Lankans ahead of traditional New Year. And now for all the details, reposing faith in India, IMF, the International Monetary Fund, has termed it a very strong economy. IMF Division Chief Daniel Lee on Tuesday stated that with a high growth rate, India is one of the bright spots in the global economy right now. The IMF's World Economic Outlook report suggests that India's real GDP is expected to grow by 5.9% this financial year and by 6.3% after surpassing both the US and China. The global lender had earlier said that Asian giants India and China are expected to account for half of the global growth in 2023. Officials said they are capable of driving global growth through consumption, investment and trade. According to the IMF report, the world economy is expected to grow at lower than 3% this year. At least four soldiers were killed in firing in the Indian border state of Punjab early on Wednesday. The incident occurred at 4.35 a.m. at Bhatinda military station, which houses mostly families of soldiers and is the residential army base. The unknown number of shooters were at large till the last reports came in. The police officials have ruled out terror angle and said it is suspected to be a fratricide incident. The army in the statement said the four army personnel were on an artillery unit stationed at the base. The statement further said a joint investigation with Punjab police was being coordinated to establish the facts of the case. The area had been cordoned off and combing operations were underway till the reports came in. Pakistan occupied Kashmir's Prime Minister Sardar Tanvir Ilyas was disqualified from holding any public office for two years by a court on Tuesday in a contempt case. Elias comes from PTI party of Pakistan's former Premier Imran Khan, who has been logged in political wrangling with the government that succeeded him in Islamabad. The Kashmiri leader was tried over a speech he made last week, criticising the courts for what he said was interference in his government's affairs. He had particularly referred to a $15 million education project funded by Saudi Arabia and said it has been a limbo because the court had issued a stay order on it. Activists accuse Islamabad falsely claims to have granted autonomy to Pakistan-occupied Kashmir while elected officials have no say in policy making or even expressing their views. Kashmir, I don't have to explain whether there are human rights or civic rights or political rights. There are none. Even the prime minister of this occupied territory cannot, uh, you know, go out of the line and uh, secure a direct investment for the welfare of this occupied territory. The United Nations has launched a review of its operations in Afghanistan and asked all Afghan staff not to come to work at least until May 5 after the Taliban administration barred its women staff from working. The UN has said that implementing the Taliban order would put the global organization in breach of its charter. The restriction on female UN workers comes in the wake of a ban on most female NGO workers in December and has prompted heavy international criticism. No foreign government has recognized the Taliban regime so far over increasing restrictions on women. It's really for their own safety, especially for, the, for our female staff, uh, right? Because we, A, we need to have them being able to work from home. Uh, we need to continue to pay them. And we, would, we know that if they were to, to ask them to come to the office in defiance of the, uh, of the edict would put them at great personal risk. 
Some officials have flagged concerns donors may pull back on support to Afghanistan's humanitarian aid program, the largest in the world, and that implementing some programs and reaching women in the conservative country without female workers would not be possible. As Sri Lanka remains mired in the throes of an economic crisis, people in the island nation are finding it hard to buy food and gifts at a time when the country's traditional New Year is approaching. A report. As Sri Lankans prepare to celebrate the Sinhalese New Year on Friday, the hard bargaining for affordable deals at the markets have been more intense this year, as the country remains mired in the throes of an economic crisis. Sri Lankans mark their New Year with a host of festivities and usually they purchase new clothes, traditional food and gifts for loved ones. However, the crowds at the wholesale and garment shops in the suburbs of the capital, Colombo, were seen thin compared to previous years. Sri Lanka's key inflation rate hit 50.3% in March, while food inflation was at 47.6%. Businesses are also feeling the brunt of consumers' lower spending power. The country's central bank kept interest rates steady earlier this month and expressed optimism that prices would decelerate sharply in the coming months in its first policy decision since securing a $3 billion IMF bailout. Moving away from the conventional norms, Himangi Sakhi, a transgender spiritual leader in India's holy Mathura city, recited Hindu religious scriptures during an event this week. Several devotees gather to listen to Bhagavad Katha, which is usually recited by Hindu male priests and soak themselves in the colours of spirituality. Transgender community members are often frowned upon in society and struggle to get decent education and job opportunities. Adult transgender people are left with limited choices of occupation like begging or prostitution. Bhagavad Saptaha Karne Ka Ye Hai कि लोगों में अवेयरनेस पैदा हो है ना कि एक किन्नर जब भागवत सप्ताह कर सकती है धर्म के रास्ते पे चल सकती है और भगवान की भक्ति कर सकती है तो हम साधारण जीवात्मा क्यों नहीं भगवान की भक्ति करके अपने जीवन को बदल सकता है लॉन्ग नोन फॉर लार्ज फैमिलीज विद द हाईएस्ट पॉपुलेशन ग्रोथ रेट अक्रॉस रिलीजियस कम्युनिटीज Muslims in India are now embracing the trend of small families, a report. Long known for large families with the highest population growth rate across India's religious communities, Muslims in India are now adopting trend of small families. This has become visible in the last 15 years, with the National Family Health Survey showing a fall in the Muslim fertility rate to 2.4, the biggest decline compared to other communities over the last two decades. According to India's last census figures, from 2011, Muslims are the biggest minority group in the country, accounting for 13% of the population of 1.4 billion. Experts say the shrinking of Muslim families highlights the success of the country's decades-old population control programs. However, they say more needs to be done to target less educated and poorer Muslims. Uh, it is good that uh, if we, we do have a small family, it would be very convenient as well for us to educate them and to give them a lavish life and to give them a better uh, field to choose. The, uh, having lesser children is also supported by the faith as well. Earlier interpretations were so bad that it was, uh, uh, it was as a given thing that whatever comes your way is kind of uh, God's will. So it isn't uh, like that anymore. We have been interpreting the f uh, tenets also in the modern way and in the way that is more useful for the common people. Muslim population in India is the world's third largest after Indonesia and Pakistan. Attitudes are changing in the mostly conservative community, especially amongst the younger generation. With India set to overtake China and become the world's most populous nation, this shift signals a demographic stability in the country.
That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.